hello there again. Thanks for joining us. You know, things get so crazy here at the creative department at Montmartre that sometimes we start something, inspiration hits us from another angle, we get sidetracked and create something new, forgetting about what we've just made. Well, that's just what happened with this cute little painting that I did a while ago. I rediscovered it on our archives, I showed it to Monica, she wove her magic and has created a really nice little lesson out of it. I paint these amazing blue orchids with some Montmartre watercolour paint in the 24 pack. So sit back, relax and let's get into it. First step is to set up some flowers or print out the accompanying PDF and just observe for a while. When you're happy, you can start to draw up the arrangement. I used to try and think about the anatomical attributes of the flowers and draw what I thought they would look like. Now I just draw what I see. This gives more of an honesty to a painting. So first I lay in a background of permanent yellow with a 50mm tacklon. Again don't worry about staying in the lines. In fact, it actually looks better if you don't. It's more in the loose style of a quick study like this too. I lay in a little yellow at the buds on the edge of the arrangement too. I then dip a traditional mop into the watery mix of permanent green and I paint in those buds and the stalks. This translucent green obviously shows as a different colour when laid over that yellow. And again this brisk application of paint helps convey that spontaneous impression as does the mark created by the mop brush. It holds a lot of paint, but one never has total control. Paintings, in my opinion, seem to be perceived more favourably when the paint has been laid in boldly, as opposed to paint that has been applied with hesitation. This is also good because you can get those happy mistakes that makes watercolour so endearing. And sometimes it's just nice to paint with no constraint. While that light green is still wet, I add in a darker mix of sap green into the stems. The two greens will blend by themselves, causing a subtle difference. I then add a watery mix of cobalt blue into the flowers. This light blue really only shows on the tip of the flowers and will be just as much an undertone as a body colour. I lay it over the buds as well and due to the yellow green, the blue changes this to a turquoise. I apply this in stabbing strokes and I try not to think about placement too much. I think more in the terms of a random pattern. As the famous art critic Herbert Reed once said, art is pattern informed by sensibility. I now lay in some permanent blue into the ends of each bud. I add a little water to make it more translucent and then lay this into the rest of the flowers. This blue has a green tinge to it and adds a subtle difference. I now add some brilliant red to the palette and then some ultramarine and create a nice warm maroon. I lay this colour into the inside of each petal. Now when I look at real flowers in front of me, I view them with what seems a different appreciation. A new set of eyes if you like. I now lay in an ochre into that vase and I use lots of water and again slap it on quick. There's nothing more boring than a flat colour. I bring it into the bottom of the vase and paint around the flower and then pad the excess colour off with a tissue. This is a really quick way to suggest a reflection. I then mix a red from ultramarine and crimson and lay it into the front plane of that table. The addition of that ultramarine makes the colour granulate beautifully. The blue looks lovely in that colour. Now water the mix down and lay it onto the top of the table. This suggests that it is flooded with more light, thereby reinforcing the difference in planes. A mid grey is slopped onto the front corner of the tablecloth and into the back side of any folds on that tabletop. I've also laid in some grey into the background to create a little contrast. I now lay the dark grey into the shadow cast from the vase. As I lay this in, I bear in mind not to make it too dark and I pay close attention to the arrangement in front of me. 
Now I lay in the stripe with Ultramarine. I just love the way Ultramarine plays on the surface of the paper. And there you have it, my interpretation of a vase of blue orchids. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching and keep your eyes peeled because we've got lots more fantastic stuff coming up for you in the future. And if you did like it and you're not there now, then jump onto our webpage at montmart.net because we've got lots more fantastic lessons. We've also got our blogs and we've got our family feed. And if you subscribe to that, then you can get free hints and tips and lots more surprises. So until next time, remember to keep on painting. See you next time.